This is what the questioning time. So anyone, any question you have, this is what time. Yes, I want to know how many people that have questions. So that our uh, ninth uh, number them. You have question, raise up your hand. We are going to start from number one. So that you will ask your question. And the Lord will use his servant to clear doubts in your life or in your heart. Praise the Lord. Amen. Praise the Lord. And there was a message I heard on Thursday. And that is why I want to ask this question. On Wednesday, I was among those that came up for altar call. Then on Thursday, mommy gave a, the revelation that those of us that are, that came up for altar call, that Jesus, that the Lord has already carried us, that we should do what, that we should rejoice. But my problem is, okay, yes, on Thursday, and now, Daddy also said that Thursday that time is over, that the Lord says it should run up, that a few seconds it will finish. But my problem is that when I went back home, I noticed that I'm still struggling with the sin of lust. I'm still struggling with that sin. So my question now is, what am I going to do? In order to be sure that I am totally free from this sin, since there is no time. Amen. Spiritual things have spiritual interpretation. Because they are spiritually designed. Amen. What the Lord did there, known unto him, are what he manifested by the light coming from the convert and going up to heaven. I don't know how many converts or how many people were real converts there. None unto the Lord are all his works and all his people. If you sincerely have given your life to Christ, um, what you interpret to be lost may not really be a sin. Amen? What you may be interpreting may not be a sin. Let me let you know this. Let's open to Matthew chapter 5 verse 27 and 28. Ye have heard that it was said by them of old time, Thou shalt not commit adultery. But I say unto you that whosoever looketh on a woman to lust after her had committed adultery with her with her already in his heart. We want to tell what is this lusting? Lusting after a woman in this sense that leads to adultery. It is not casual thought that is passing away. It is not spiritual oppression where the devil is forcing something into your mind and you are saying no. He's forcing it. You say no, I cannot do that. Force, I cannot do that. It is not that one. It is a willful thought with the purpose Willful, personal thought with a full desire to sleep with a woman. You get it? You are happy with it. You want it. You set your mind there. You are looking for it. That is lusting that it shows you have done it already. Is that okay? Abraham bound Isaac, carried him, put him on the fire he has dressed, 
carried a knife. Was he pretending? And was to cut his neck. The Lord said, stop it. You have done that already. But the one that comes to you, your mind, like mosquitoes, get out. Vum, 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 vum. Oh, you wanted to catch it. You are not able. You are moving, go, go. Catch it like this. You are not able. That one is not the lost we are talking about. Because you have not released your will to it. You do not like it. You are not looking for it. Are you looking for it? Stand up, tell me. Are you looking for it? Give her, give her. When you went back home, were you looking for her to get a woman and sleep with her? No. <laughs> but the devil is oppressing that man. And yet you say no. Even if you dream that you slept with a woman, you woke up, you saw that you discharged. That is not a sin. Because your will was not involved. Your will was not involved. It's not what you liked it. It was rather a spiritual attack that you must battle with him. And what should you do? The Bible says in the book of James chapter 4. James Chapter 4, verse 7. Submit yourselves, therefore, to God. Resist the devil. What will happen? And he will flee from you. Resist him. Stand far. No, I reject that. I refuse that. I refuse that. And what should you do again? Fight him with the weapon of spiritual warfare. In 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 3 to verse 6. For though we walk in the flesh, we do not war after the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds, casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalted itself against the knowledge of God and bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. And having in a readiness. To revenge all disobedience. When your obedience. Is fulfilled. Submit yourself to Christ. Make sure you are not willingly. Asking, looking for any woman to sleep with her. No. You are living in righteousness. But the devil brought up this in your mind. Ah. First time in battle. With the weapons of our warfare. The blood of Jesus. The word of God, the, the, the name of Jesus, the, the power of the Holy Spirit. I bind you. Get out from my mind. I resist you. Move. Get out. Not me. That is what you should be doing. You will find in time those things will be breaking down. Will be breaking down. It's a serious battle. Is it only for one day? Is it only for one way? First Peter. Chapter 5, verse 7 to verse 11. Casting all your care upon him, for he cared for you. Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary the devil, as a roaring lion, walketh about, seeking whom he may devour, whom resist steadfast in the faith. Whom do what? Resist steadfast. Steadfast for how many hours? How many minutes? How many days? How many weeks? How many months? How many years? As long as he's standing, stand. Having done all to stand, stand. Whom resisted first in the faith using Jesus? <laughs> Don't go. Maybe it, it, the, the devil carry your mind to a particular woman. It's, and, and it's, your mind went there instead of saying no you went to fight that woman uh -huh. you are allowing the devil to bring you to me you are a witch you are a marine who told you it's the devil that is doing that business and you are not willing the fact that you are not willing shows that you are righteous your righteousness has not been tempered you are not willing you are resisting it it's not only women men, men. women also have the same battle 
But you're not willing. And a woman told me in Suka side that she's about 70 year old woman. He said, this thing that the devil is doing, see how old I am now. Am I looking for any man? But the thought remain in my mind. It's pushing it. That's the battle we have to fight. Whom resist steadfast in the faith in righteousness. Stand to it. Now it says, knowing that the same afflictions are accomplished in your breathing that are in the world. It's as if everybody passed through that way. I passed through that way. It was a battle. Battle. Fight. Fought. 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 Hey. It was a battle. For a long time there, I think this thing, around the 80s or so. Battle. If I enter the vehicle, I will want to go to the back because we are going to fight there. I may use a book to cover my mouth. Jesus, bind you. So that nobody will be seeing this madness going on there. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Walking in the office, I could take a distance. You're binding. You're casting. You're breaking. Praise the Lord. I am free. <laughs> so, as you're fighting, it will be reducing. It will be reducing. If you, resi if, if you uh, go to relax, it will come back. But with time, you will win. <laughs> See what the Lord says here. Whom resisted fast in the faith Knowing that the same afflictions are accomplished in your brethren that are in the world. Let's read verse 10 together. One, two, go. But the God of all grace, who hath called us unto his eternal glory by Christ Jesus, after that ye have suffered a while, make you perfect, establish, strengthen, settle you. There's advantage in allowing that battle. You will become stronger. You yourself know that if you don't pray, you're gone. So, you will develop prayer skill. Prayer muzzle. The Lord wants it. So, he allows you. It's like the eagle wants to teach the you how to fly. He carries it from the nest and fly to the open air and leave it there. He's struggling. I say, I'm falling. Come to me, mother. I'm coming. I'm good. He's watching it. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. If I don't train you like that, you will not fly. So the Lord allows that. Five. When the Lord has developed enough of your strength, he will ring the bell. Barang, barang, set and go away now. You're finished. I've achieved what I'm looking for. Amen. Amen. So fight and know that you will reach a point in which your God will say it's over. But then you will be settled in life. You will be strengthened in life. You will be ready for his use. Fight and keep yourself righteous. If you play laziness, you fail and you have no reason why you fail because others succeed. Don't play laziness. Call somebody else to battle with you. Maybe a prayer partner. Constant. Break it. Break it. Break it. He will overcome. Are you okay? Okay. Yes. Any questions next? Praise the Lord. This, my question goes this way. I want to know whether the chapter, that the movement have a chapter here. In <laughs> How many of you are members of holiness movement in Abia State? Turn around 360 degrees. <laughs> Amen. How many of you are in Abba here? Holiness Revival Movement. Is your question answered? So, you will see the coordinator. After the meeting, see. Well, I'm even going to make invitation. Yes. Praise the Lord. Mm. My question goes like this. What of if you are a Christian and actually know that sin is no more ruling in your life, you are well sanctified. 
But you always have demonic dreams. Sometimes you see yourself eating, traveling. But after, when you wake up, you know that you go binding and losing, you know, praying all times, sometimes going for cancer and all that. And the thing is, is that we, if you don't put up to us and we the person make it to heaven in that condition. You will go to heaven without any problem because those things do not show that you are sinning. You are righteous, you are holy, but the devil is fighting you. In dream, you see yourself Maybe as a man, a woman is always coming. And you find yourself doing what you don't want in dream. Or as a woman, a man is always coming. Those things are not seen to you, but they are disturbance to your progress. You will just have to be praying to overcome them, but they are not seen to you. If you dream that you ate, somebody gave you rice, and you ate, you were so happy in the dream, when you wake up, will you drink water? <laughs> no, you have eaten now. <laughs> have you eaten? <laughs> so that's what it means. It's just a dream. It's not reality. So you have not sinned. Yet, you must fight it. Because the devil wants to train your mind so that in reality you should be looking for that thing. So that's why you must fight and reject it. Seek prayer. But that, you know, those people who, those who come to for prayer, for counseling, uh, I, what's your problem? I dream that uh, I am, I see myself swimming in water. I dream that, uh-uh. If it's witchcraft, say it is witchcraft. Witchcraft is not a dream. My mean spirit business is not a dream. Are you dreaming now that you are in this program or it is a reality? That's witchcraft. Not dream. Reality. So don't come and say it's a dream because God will not deliver you. You are a liar. They are not ready yet. Yeah. But it, it, if it is in dream, of course, that is not witchcraft too. Because there's no sin attached to it. It's a dream. You can dream you are swimming in water, but that does not mean you are in witch or in mothering kingdom. No. Imagination can cause that. Or attack of the devil can cause that. Sometimes it's just normal case. Sometimes it's demonic. So you have to fight it. You have to bind it. Seek prayer. Break it. But it's not witchcraft. Is that okay? If witches and wizards know themselves. Everybody say it. If they come for counsel and let them speak the truth, say it. Only the truth can make them free. Only the truth can make them free. Yeah, the next question. Thank you, sir, for this opportunity to ask, to ask this question, sir. I want to appeal to you as a man who has obtained grace and mercy in the act of holiness. You have been consistent in that place for a long time now. So I'm talking to you as a coach in this area. Like in the football field, you have coaches who have masters at the act. To us, we didn't come from this part. We came from prosperity. We came from prayer. We came from prophecies. And by, by virtue of God's grace, you have been the part of holiness for a long time. So you have, like, you have mastered the act of it. So, the reason I want to ask that, like, even I was surprised when you preached today, you, you came also first to say, no, this man is not pretending. This is part of him. When you preached today, I just say, a first came who was saying, no. I've been around for a long time. saying, this man is not pretending. This is part of him. It's a passion about it. So, how do you maintain your passion? I want to know, how do you maintain your passion in this? Because there are different kinds of preaching you can preach. But for you to maintain this passion for eternity, how do you maintain the passion for eternity and see it moving strong? In the midst of distractions and things moving around, you are seeing yourself moving. Uh, they have no two things here. They have to tell us to be able to maintain our flow in this part of eternity, sir. A pleasure. In the book of 1 Kings, 
chapter 19. I read from verse 4. But he himself went a day's journey into the wilderness and came and sat down under a juniper tree. And he requested for himself that he might die. And said, it is enough now, O Lord, take away my life, for I am not better than my father's. And as he lay and slept under a juniper tree, behold, then an angel touched him and said unto him, Arise and eat. And he looked, and behold, there was a cake baked on the coals, and a cruise of water at his head. And he did eat and drink, and laid him down again. And the angel of the Lord came again the second time, and touched him, and said, Arise and eat, because the journey is too great for thee. And he arose and did eat and drink, and went in the strength of that meat, Forty days and forty nights unto Horeb, the mount of God. What was responsible for this strength of Elijah is what he has eaten. Is that? Is what he has drunk. But not just what he has eaten and drunk. It's what he ate again. And drank again. Because of the journey. The angel gave him first course of food. And brought a second course. Take again. Because the journey is far for you. Many are not willing for second course. They just want to go ordinary Christian life. They are not ready to go deeper. How many of you read the Bible? The Bible is there in your house. You don't read it. How will you travel this journey? How many of you take time to pray? How many minutes do you pray per day? How will you go this long journey? In righteousness. In holiness. Your strength will finish on the way. And if thou faint in the day of adversity. What happens? Your strength is small. When the Lord was inviting you to second course. You said no. I'm okay. Stand up and eat. Because the journey is far. Develop prayer life. More. Because this is your casual prayer life. will not see you through. This the little thing you are doing. You can't read books. You can't read the Bible well. You it will not see you through. The battle is hard. He said no. Leave me. I can manage. Now your strength is not enough. You fall on the way. This is repeated in the New Testament. Genesis chapter 25. Matthew chapter 25, verse 1. Then shall the kingdom of heaven be likened unto ten virgins, which took their lambs and went forth to meet the bridegroom. And five of them were wise, and five were foolish. They that were foolish took their lambs and took no oil with them. But the wise took oil in their vessels with their lambs. Extra oil. The foolish, only the ones in their lamb, because they are thinking, ah, by the way, this one will serve. Uh -uh. The wise take extra oil. No, I don't want to carry, but the wise took extra oil. While the bridegroom tarried, they all slumbered and slept. The time was longer than they supposed. 
Hey, the Lord says he's spending seconds now. Where has seconds become up to these three years? The thing has not happened. Where is, he sp- where is it up to four years? Do extra work on yourself. Don't go and surrender and say, I'm going to sleep in my house because Jesus is coming. Amen? Go and do what is necessary for your food, for the feeding of your family, for the progress of your life. Occupy! Until he comes. Now, the bridegroom delayed his coming. That's what happened. And bought this group slept. Verse 6. And at midnight there was a cry made. Behold, the bridegroom cometh. Go ye out to meet him. Then all the virgins arose and trimmed their lambs. And the foolish said unto the wise, Give us of your oil, for our lambs are gone out. The angel told Elijah, Eat again. You will go and eat again. This simple Christianity you are carrying. No extra commitment. No extra study of the world. No no time for prayer. No real time for fasting. No. It won't take you far. It won't take you far. When your strength shall finish on the way because it's small. The bridegroom delayed his coming. Their lambs burnt out. They came to need extra oil at the wrong time. At the wrong time. And the foolish said unto the wise, Give us of your oil, for our lambs are gone out. But the wise answered, saying, Not so, lest there be not enough for us and you. But go ye rather to them that sell and buy for yourselves. Everything has time. Is it after the rapture that you want to commit yourself to Jesus now? Is it you will be dedicating yourself? Hey, this business will not carry my attention again. I will make sure. I said, you, after rapture, do it now. So, when you keep yourself into this extra commitment, extra study, extra praying, the passion, the power, the grace will always fall. See you through. Is that okay? Any other question? Praise the living God. Daddy, I have two questions. Number one is that uh, we are teaching, we talked of business, the area of business. We talked of in the area of business. And I repented in the year 2014. I committed myself into the work of God. I surrendered and I became a full-time worker in our ministry. Now, as time goes on, this last year, I come to realize that I have to go to school, I have to do one or two other things to help myself. Now, I said, and uh, I look and I come to understand that the appreciation they are giving to us in the ministry is not enough. Now I went into prayers. I said, God, for me not to compromise, I want to join business. I want to be doing part-time work. I will be doing your work, but let it be that I'm earning something with my, as I'm doing the business. So I started praying last year. As I prayed, January this year, the answer came because I tabled the particular business to God. And at the revelation I got, clarified to me that God gave me go ahead order. Now, as they born again, I repented. The fire was burning in me. I was preaching to people, encouraging people. But now, now that I'm doing the business, it's not a sin to those people that are backslided. Now that I'm not doing the full time work now. But I'm still doing the mysterious work. People are seeing it that I'm persuaded. I'm no longer at the track. I want to ask this question. Is, is that in persuading? 
That's number one question. Number two question is that since I gave my life to Jesus, the revelation that God has been giving me, giving me about my ministry, at times I see myself in a church, I, you show me samples with names. And the, in those churches that the Lord has been showing me, you see uh, forces of that or demons. They will stand against the church. They will stand under that, uh, in the sense that I will not be able to enter. So the, the revelation has been coming, coming, many of them. But among the churches that the Lord has been showing me, I have never seen any of them. Uh, maybe the name here, yeah. apart from one. Now, this thing has been happening, and the more I get the revelation, the more battle I get from the devil. The more battle I get from the king, uh, occultic people. To the extent that they, many of these occultic pastors, they come to me in the spiritual realm, <clears throat> if I can deviate and join them. So this thing has been the battle. And my question, this number two question is, Sir, how can I overcome these people? Even the devil himself comes in different occasions, many a times. Amen. It's very unfortunate that I don't know you. So I don't know the church you went to be there since 2014. And they kept you until last year. You are coming up. Were you in an original church? Did, is that church following Jesus? Do they know the doctrines of righteousness and holiness? Is the person, the man of God there, the pastor there, is he one that has a perfect heart and wants the welfare of everybody? Or is the one seeking his own that he will see some young people and throw them to himself and say, Sir, stay here, stay here. Not thinking of their future. How life would be with them in the future. I really don't know the nature of that church. But as to whether you have backsliding or no, you should know. Come, have you backsliding? No, sir. Oh, you have not backsliding? Yes, sir. What does it mean that you have not backsliding? Like my relationship with God, okay. my communication with God, okay. and I'm still physically, I'm still doing the work of God. Okay, and spiritually, you are sound. Yes, sir. Is somebody in your condition a backslider? No, sir. Then you don't bother because the the main thing is the witness in your spirit. He that is born of God has the witness in himself. And the Spirit beareth as witness that what? We are the children of God. So once you have that witness and you see it in your life, don't bother what they say. The Lord be with you. The other question is uh, the revelations that come to you about other churches. Again, I'm not aware of that. I don't know the details. That would have required personal counseling to know you know the nature of your revelations and know what the details are but i cannot really tell you more about that praise the lord this uh, there is this question that has been bothering me about how how women should adorn themselves uh, from the book of first timothy chapter 2 verse 9 that place says in like manner also the women adorn themselves in modest apparel, with shamefacedness and sobriety, not with braided hair or gold or pears or costly array. Praise the Lord. And another translation, another translation says, in the same way that women also adorn themselves in decent clothing in decent clothing with modesty and propriety not just with braided hair gold pears or expensive clothing praise the lord so please that is this thing that has been confusing me though i myself 
I've gotten the conviction that wearing jewels, uh, somebody changing the nature of his hair, that those things will not lead somebody to heaven. But when I'm talking to others about it, they will be asking me, where, where did I get such a thing in the Bible? That the Bible said that uh, God created those things for women to beautify themselves. That as you are putting them on, you, you should also uh, adorn yes, yourself spiritually as a godly woman. So, sir, please, I want you to clarify me on those areas, whether there is a quotation in the Bible that is backing it. Then, secondly, uh, this modest apparel. I thought that model, uh, uh, that's modest apparel is for you to cover your nakedness very well. But there's these people that when they come to you, they will be telling you, if you're a woman and you are sewing your clothes, that the hand is supposed to be to reach at the wrist, yeah. And the, and the hand was supposed to be reaching, uh, on your legs. So please, I'm confused. Come, the, come to the aisle. Let me see where your own reach. That one has not reached the proper place it should reach. Okay, sir, so please. Okay. Where, where should you reach? Praise the Lord. <laughs> yes. What the Lord is protecting is sin in our life worldliness in our lives, satanism in our lives, even through clothing and through adornment, through dressing. Satan, who is promoting sin, has developed various styles to corrupt people. Ephesians chapter 2 I read from verse 1 to verse 3. Or let me add 4 to it. And you had he quickened who were dead in trespasses and sins, wherein in time past ye walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that now walketh in the children of disobedience, among whom also we all had our conversation in time past, in the lust of our flesh, fulfilling the desires of the mind, and were by nature the children of wrath, even as others. But God, who is rich in mercy, for his great love wherewith he loved us. Here, he's talking that we were dead in sin, in trespassing and sin. Sinners are now dead, unconscious even. They are in sin without even being conscious that what they are doing is evil. They do it with pleasure. The mind is not even thinking of sin. Thinking of evil. It's you who say it's sin. To them it's not normal life. They unconscious in their act. And it says also that they are walking according to the course of this world. The path of this world. Everybody, every sinner is following that path. The sinners are following their path. According to the prince of the power of the air. This part is designed by the spirits of the power of the air. What's his name? Satan. He is the one that designed the part. The sinners are to follow. The spirit that now walketh in the children of disobedience. Those who follow this satanic path that he designed for them to follow are disobedient children. 
They are disobedient children. So, First Timothy is telling us this act that Satan has designed the course of this war. It is not exhaustive. It just mentions a few. Because the world will continue to produce new ones. But it's only the, it will be this type and such like. First Peter repeats it. The course of this world. What is it? Jericoiling, palming, attachment, withdrawn, rainbow. Rainbow is, is a new title I learned recently. If those who have green, white, yellow, black, their hair has many colors. That's called rainbow. So, all this and every other kind of what learners. Every other kind. The ones that have been before the jewelry. The jewelry. The ring, the chains, the bracelets, and so on. These are jewelry. The scripture you read now, uh, the Bible exhorts women there. Let's read it. That first Timothy chapter 2. Verse 8, verse, let's read from verse uh, 8 to 10. It goes, I will therefore that mean pray everywhere, lifting up holy hands without wrath and doubting, in like manner also that women adorn themselves in modest apparel, with shamefastness and sobriety. Can you read along with me? Not with broidered hair or gold or pears or costly array not with not with everybody say it gold gold is if it's checked in another uh, translation is jewelry and that is a compound word that stands for all these items of jewelry earrings rings bracelets all kinds of those jewelry, even gold, what it, uh, beads, you put them in the sand. And they are items of ornamentation. Items of what? They are items of beauty. Women employed upon them, some men also. To make themselves beautiful in the sight of people. And so, play halotry. Attract people. Lure people. In Hosea chapter 2. Hosea chapter 2. Verse 13. Hosea chapter 2 verse 13. And I will visit upon her the days of Balim. Do you know Balim? Worshipping Baal. Do you know Baal? You know Baal? Is that a Christian God? What God is that? Idol. I will visit upon her the days of Balim, Balim, wherein she burnt incense to them, and she decked herself with what? With her earrings and her jewels, and went after her lovers, and forgot me, said the Lord. Can you see now those items of ornamentation? What the women use them for? Eh? One associated with idol worship. Two. They are jewel for decoration. Why? To attract men for immorality. That's the answer. To attract men for immorality. That's the purpose. So, the other translation that you read was the translation of people who use earrings. Who, who wear all these things. And they must pro provide a word to justify their action. 
So to give you a direct word, then why are you wearing earrings? If they give it direct inter interpretation, not with, they say, not just to make provision that we can do them also. Are you getting it? By that translation, their conscience is relieved. But is their translation correct? Exodus chapter 33. We read verse 4 to verse 6. Exodus chapter 33, verse 4 to verse 6. And when the people had this evil tidings, the mourn, and no man did put on him, what? His ornaments. So they are also called ornaments, as you know them. They are ornaments. Items of beauty. No man put them again. Not, not just the... No, they didn't use them again. Verse 5. For the Lord hath said unto Moses, Say unto the children of Israel, Ye are a stiff-necked people. I will come up into the midst of thee in a moment, and consume thee. Therefore now, put off thy ornaments from thee, that I may know what to do for thee, do unto thee. Did he say put off some ornament? Clear everything off. So those people who have that interpretation are wrong. By their interpretation, they turn many into sin. They say, clear everything off. But they say, not just. You can use it, but it's not that you should be giving your mind to it. No, clear it off. Then, let's read verse 6 together. One, two, go. And the children of Israel stripped themselves of their ornaments by the moon or a plate, everything away. So that translation is wrong. Everything. Gold means item of beauty. And the items of on, um, of on, they are ornaments to ornament, to beautify. Clear them away. What are these things particularly? Numbers chapter 31, please. Numbers chapter 31, verse 50 and 51. We have therefore brought 50 and 51. We have therefore brought an oblation for the Lord. I want you to be there because. You will read with me to know what are those things called gold. That Timothy called it gold. Peter called it gold. The jewelry. What are they? We have therefore brought an oblation for the Lord. What every man had gotten of jewels of gold. Can you give them? Number one is what? Chains. Number two? Bracelets. Number three? Rings, whether wedding ring or engagement ring, rings. Number four, yes. earrings. Number five, that's necklace. To make an atonement for our soul before the Lord. And Moses and Elias and the priest took the gold of them, even all wrought jewels. Gold wrought into jewels. Gold fashioned into jewels for wearing. Don't do it. These were gotten from the hidden, the Midianites, when the Lord did, commanded Moses to fight them. And they were bringing, so that it could be melted, melted to fashion vessels in the temple. Since they were God, not to be put on. The Lord has commanded them to remove them completely or by the moon horror when they were coming out of Egypt. But they got these ones now from the Midianites. Is that okay? The gold, therefore, may as Peter said, not of gold. He was mentioning is these items. Chains. Don't use them. 
Brusly, don't use them. Rings, don't use them. Whether wedding ring or what. Beads, don't use them. Earring, don't use them. Nose ring, don't use them. Necklace, don't use them. People put on this to show glory. You know, you, there are some clothes you see some women share wearing with shining stones that are bright. Once light touch them, what do you see in them? The moon has come down to the earth. Bright, the body is bright. Shining stones, don't use them. Don't allow them in your clothes. These things are items to show the beauty of a person, the glory of a person, the greatness of a person. Don't go that way. In modest apparel. Sufficient to ensure your shyness as a woman, your meekness. Not costly array refers to clothes got in purposely for show so people can see how great every other woman will compare ah, this woman is on top it will not allow humility in your life and your savior is humble why are you going to where you can't be humble why isn't what cannot make you humble you miss heaven so don't go that direction is that okay uh, but uh, uh, what is this thing you're saying? God said He is the one putting earrings on people's foot body, and you're saying that we should. Let's go to that place. Ezekiel chapter sixteen. Ezekiel chapter sixteen. I read from verse one. Ezekiel sixteen verse one. Again the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Son of man, cause Jerusalem to know her abominations. Is Jerusalem a human being? She is depicted here as a man or as a woman. So, Jerusalem also have abominations. Yes. A city can have abominations. Cause Jerusalem. Cause the people that are living in Jerusalem to know the abominations they have brought to this city. He goes on. And say, Thus said the Lord unto Jerusalem. Thy bed and thy nativity is of the is of the land of Canaan. Thy father was an Amorite, and thy mother an Hittite. And as for thy nativity, in the day thou was born, thy navel was not caught, neither was thou washed in water to supple thee. Thou was not salted at all nor swaddled at all. None I pity thee to do any of this unto thee, to have compassion on thee, but thou was cast out in the open field to the loathing of any person in the day that thou was born. And when I passed by thee, I saw thee polluted in thine own blood. I said unto thee, when thou was in thy blood, live. Yeah, I said unto thee, when thou was in thy blood, live. I have caused thee to multiply as the bud of the field. And thou hast increased and waxed great. And thou art come to excellent ornaments. Check it. Excellent ornaments. Things that make you beautiful. Thy breasts are fashioned, and thine hair is grown, whereas thou was naked and bare. Now, when I passed by thee and looked upon thee, behold, thy time was the time of love. And I spread my skirt over thee, 
and cover thy nakedness. Yea, I swear unto thee, and entered into a covenant with thee, saith the Lord God, and thou becamest mine. Then I then wash I thee with water, yea, I truly wash away the, thy blood from thee, and anoint thee with oil. I clothe thee also with broided wool, and shot thee with badger skin, and I guided thee about with fine linen, and I covered thee with silk. I decked thee also with ornaments, and I put brass leaves upon thy hands, and a chain on thy neck. Amen. And I put a jewel on thy forehead and earrings in thine ear and a beautiful crown upon thy head. Thus was thou decked with gold and silver. And thy raiment was of fine linen and silk and broidered wool. Thou didst eat fine flour and honey and oil. And thou was exceeding beautiful. And thou didst pro prosper into a kingdom. And thy renown went forth among the hidden for thy beauty. For it was perfect through my comeliness, which I had put Upon thee, said the Lord God, but thou didst trust in thine own beauty and play the hallow. Because of thy renown, and pourest out thy fornications on every one that passes by. His it was. Check this scripture. Was God talking to any woman? Eh? Was God talking to you as a woman here? Whom was he talking to? To Jerusalem. And he was speaking in figures of speech. It's not a direct statement. How can you put an earring upon a, uh, upon a city? If somebody wants to put earring on in Abana, how will he put it on Abana? Eh? Will he go to the road and try it there? Eh? It's figures of speech showing things that the Lord did to beautify Jerusalem. The glory he gave to Jerusalem to make Jerusalem a renowned city that attracted people to come to that city. Now you Jerusalem you have now you have gone into idolatry they're now committing idolatry which is lacking to adultery that's what you're doing with all my the things i invested in your can in your city you're not appreciating me how i cared for you and brought you up as a child that was born and cast away i picked you up there i took care of you I bring you, I brought you up for myself. But he was using the language of men towards a woman. Now, for the beauty of Jerusalem, he was using the language, I mean, he was using the things women do to themselves for cosmetic beauty. Not natural beauty. Cosmetic beauty. Earring, bracelet, this, that to make bring themselves up to beauty that's what he was saying how lost god this way you have seen hosea's wife dead in her earring and her jewel but is playing hollow tree that is a physical woman but now he's talking about the city my gold and silver that i deposited among you has made you use it to construct houses to make your roads fine and the city became great and now you have brought idol worship to it so which way now can a woman come to say God has given her hearing by this scripture? Are you the one? If God asks you, why, was I talking to you? What will you say? He said, I love those things too much. I was looking for every scripture that can support it. 
If the scripture will not do it willingly, I will force it. So people are forcing the scripture to send people to hell. If you have life to play with, accept that it is justifying your worry. If you are going to play with your soul, then accept that this is talking about jewel. That you can use it. But if you value your soul, leave the scripture as it is. It's allegorical statement. Metaphoric statement. Speaking of Jerusalem as a woman, as a harlot. Is that clear? Thank you. Ah, but Jesus himself said, the prodigal son came back and the father put ring into his son. Ah. Did Jesus tell you that that father is God? Uh -huh. Was the father of the prodigal son God? Then why are you accusing Jesus? Who used stories in the society of his day to illustrate divine things? Ah, but where did he have to mission ring? But he, was, he also mission for one eye. Do you remember when he said, oh, stay what? Embezzle his master's property. When the master said, I will check up your wall. You will leave my wall. He played wisdom. He said, how much do you owe my master? I owe him 80 uh, barrel of uh, oil. Write down 40. Because I'm going to give account to him now. That man is a terrible man. Write 40. What happened to the rest? Oh, I will see you later. Then, uh, how much uh, back of rice? Oh, it's 40 back of rice. Write 15. Ah. How? I leave the other ones. This man, and he finished all things like this. And the Bible says, Jesus says, the Lord of that master commended him when he came to hear it later. I say he has dealt wisely. Was it Jesus that commended the man or, the, or, or, or his master? Then why don't you charge Jesus for telling a story that involved 419? Follow the teachings of God. But God, for his great love, why would he have loved us? Now takes people to heaven and to hell to bring truth to clear up this scripture that Satan is using to kill people by revelations, by prophetic revelations, by the voice of the Lord, by divine experience, the truth is now revealed. To justify the truth of scripture. So that if they are using scripture to misinterpret for you, go to those the Lord has taken to heaven and brought divine message from his lips. And you are seeing signs following. Take that one. And believe the true interpretation of scripture. If you want to go to heaven. Amen. Thank you very much. Which other one is that? Oh, the length of the cloth. You are not coming to sing song, but just come and stand in the front here. Fire! Come and stand in the front. Although some of the uh, blouse they are wearing can go too much to be touching ground and carry him dead out of it. If you can go to this extent, you are not sinning. If the length of your cloth can go to this extent, you are not. I only advise that don't allow it to be rubbing the ground and carry dead. Make it a little above this so that it doesn't carry dead. Is that clear? I have not condemned it. I'm just advising you. Is that clear? But if it takes this form, you are not sinning. Go and sit down. Thank you, choir. Dress always good, eh? Hallelujah. So my question is... Yes, go ahead. Okay, my question is from 
from our community. Eh? They don't believe if you marry outside, you are now part of that place you marry to. They still see you as part of the family where you're coming from. Now my question is, as the Lord was ministering to us through Sister Linda last night that Igbos don't go to health, that some many Igbos spend money in burial. So my question is now, I'm the first daughter. If my grandfather is still alive, if for adventure he died before me because nobody knows who is going to die first, but I'm just asking, if he dies before me because I must make contribution for the burial. Now I want to ask because when a woman dies in our community, it's a must whether because our our village they so much believe in I do. So they don't appreciate or welcome this uh, Bible way of life. You must give a goat to the family where she she came from. So my question is this so that we don't go sinning against God. Uh, by half Christian, you're, you're compromising with them or, because if you say no, they, the person will not be buried. So my question is, how do we do this thing? Because it's not the norms. Take care of yourself in righteousness and holiness. Try to help another person. But if the person will pull you away from righteousness, leave that place. Don't do it. Whether it's your father, it's your mother, it's your brother, it's your child. Make sure the number one thing in your life is Jesus and his righteousness. If somebody dies in your family and you suggest what to do, they say no, leave them to go and bury that person. Have nothing to do with it. The problem is you people are afraid that you will die. That there is a witch. That there is an idol in that family. That if you don't do according to that, you will, they will kill you. It means you are not even going to heaven yourself. Because you have filled yourself with the fear of material things, people above God. And Jesus said, he that will follow me and will not hate his father, his mother, his brother, his tradition. He will not enter, he's not fit for the kingdom. Despise the idol they are going to consult to kill you. Despise the incantations they are going to make against you. Despise the voice of the old man that does not know Jesus. Despise everything and stand on what is true. If they will not follow you. Leave the burial there for them to do. Let the dead bury their dead. When the Lord asked Gideon, go and pull down the shrine of your father. Is Gideon also grew up in a powerful tradition like the Hebrews. Hey God, what do I Go in the night and do it. He went and pulled down the, 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 the idol and cut down, those, cut down the trees. In the dead time everybody gathered. They are looking for Gideon. You must you must kill Gideon. Bring Gideon, he must be killed. Why? He cut down the trees of Baal. He burned down the altar of Baal. And the lost, uh, and the father said what? Where are you people fighting for bear? Uh uh. If bear is God, let him fight for himself. That's what these Muslims are doing. Fighting for Allah. If Allah is God, let him fight for himself. He doesn't know what to do. That's the question. If that idol has power, let him fight for himself. Eventually the people didn't know how to do. And the Gideon's father believed in God. He said, your name today is Jerubel. Uh, my son, if Baal is God, let him fight you. The matter finished. Did, did, did Baal fought Gideon? I mean, did Baal fight G Gideon? No, sir. But you are free. That is the whole thing. Fear is your problem. You cannot stand that God will defend you. You cannot take a step of righteousness so that God should defend you. You are afraid that you will die. You will die. You will die in hell. Yes, you are going to die. 
You are as good as dead. Why? You are afraid of God. He that is ashamed of me before men, with him will I also be ashamed of before my Father which is in heaven. Go boldly. If there were true Christians among the Hebrews that would that had stood up in the early time, you would have not made this tradition alive. Now the Lord is resting up the people. I said the Lord is resting up the people. From today, you don't submit to any evil tradition of the Hebrews. If I don't have power, let him arise against you. Are you serious? Yes, sir. Have you heard? Yes, sir. Then it is then Jesus, the Son of God will appear in that fire. Jesus will appear and silence Nebuchadnezzar. And he will change his decree. And say there is no man that can deliver after this sort. Everybody must bow down to the God of Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego. Promote God in your land. Promote God in your land. Promote Jesus. Promote Jesus. Thank you. What about the uniform? Family uniform, I beg. Listen. Anything done in the name of this darkness, don't join them. Anything done in the name of this darkness, don't join them. Hey, what would they say to me? Let them say what they want to say. Is that okay? Yes. Praise the Lord. I have two questions. Number one, sir, there's a place that I've not been able to search out where it says that you should separate yourself from people who give themselves to change. Now, I have somebody that I work with as a Christian. Formerly, she was not putting on earrings. After some time, she started putting on earrings. How do I go about? Should I continue being a partner with her in prayers? That's number one. Two, if you have somebody, somebody that comes and collects your money and gambles with that money, God has shown you that the money is being used in gambling. And that person is very close to you. How do you go about it? The woman who is putting on earring, have you made all effort or you are only seeking to run away from her? Have you made effort to convince her? Have you tried your best to, because she, her soul is under battle. Somebody has come to her and has deceived her. You will go back to her and convince her. You will take her to God and pray, God, help me to serve this woman. You will get books that speak on these things. You will get message that speak on these things to come and give to, to her so she can be delivered. It's when you have finished all your effort and it does not yield and the woman is very stubborn, is moving on, that you withdraw. Please, then, sir, her, her denomination is among those people that support the putting of hearing. I mean, deal with her. Your denomination doesn't go to heaven. It's an individual. Neither does denomination go to hell. It's an individual. Somebody is collecting money from you for gambling. Money is coming for you for gambling. I'm sure it's gambling for you. Otherwise, you would have stopped since. He's collecting from you and go to gambling. He's collecting from you. He must, maybe he made a promise to you that if I succeed, we will share. Sir, let me be personal. Eh? Let me, God revealed it to me. I never knew. And it's my husband, precisely. So how do I go about it? You can't give your money to your husband to go and kill person. You can't give your, your money to your husband to go and commit adultery. You can't give your money to your husband to go and offend her. So when he asks for money, what do I do? Not for gathering, for gambling. I won't know. But when he comes back, I will not see uh, the, this thing. If I ask you, uh, your uh, wisdom will direct you. Okay, sir. Otherwise, you will hide under gambling. I will not be giving money to for essential matters to your husband. Let wisdom direct you. Praise the Lord. Now, the please, there is this question that has been troubling me for a long time. 
a lady was about getting married. The, her husband in question has paid her bride price. And both of them have slept together, but have not worked in the church. But later, though both of them were unbelievers, later, the, ma the man divorced her, went and started sleeping with another person. Now, my question is this. The lady in question, is she, is she still, uh, does she still have the right to remarry? Have the, uh, he paid dowry and finished everything on this woman? She, he paid the dowry. Uh huh. They did the traditional wedding. Uh huh. Then, before the, uh, before the, uh, church wedding. They, they did the traditional wedding. Did the woman leave her father's house and came to stay with him now for marriage? No. The marriage has not taken place. But both of them have, have slept together. Yeah, but the woman has not left. Uh, no, she has not packed her things. To, to because the they, they were waiting for another time to do that for the for the wedding for the wedding so marriage didn't get complete the marriage gets complete not by dowry not by the traditional wedding but by leaving and cleaving officially you get it now a man meets a woman to marry her they go to the parents and the i want to marry your daughter okay okay then I, this is what you should pay they have arranged and he paid that thing and what remains now remains the wedding she if the both of them are righteous they won't still sleep together will they sleep together they won't still sleep together sleeping together is iniquity is sin because the time to do it has not come why marriage is a man shall leave father and mother. The woman too will leave father and mother. And the two shall cleave together. Is then they become one flesh. But the living has not taken place. The living has not taken place. Come. Do you buy a car to leave it in the hand of the dealer? Anytime you want to drive, you go and pick, drive and take it back there. Is that what you do? What do you do when you buy a car? You take it to your house. It's no more under the control of the dealer. Is that not so? And so the dealer cannot come to your house and carry it and go and sell to another person. I say, brother, you, have, you didn't finish paying me. Will he do that? He cannot. It has left you. But what if the car is still in the hand of the house of the dealer? You paid some money, but you have not finished actually. And you always come, carry it, drive, and keep it there. Carry it. You will come one day, the dealer has sold the it and give you your money. Because you did, where, 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 where? You didn't remove it from. The particular still bear my name. Are you hearing? The particulars are still bearing my name. So you can't say that it has become your car yet. Take your money. Because this car has been under my control. I've been all washing it. I've been all watching over it and don't do everything you have not completely settled it if you have paid dowry if you are not ready for white color wedding say after this give me my wife i move with her don't leave her there then move with her or you announce there in the tradition that i am stopping at tradition God will be witness to your words. Your words matter. Your covenant. God is witness to that covenant. I am stopping a tradition. I'm not going for church wedding. Then they give you your wife. It becomes official. After the traditional wedding. If you meet with her, are you singing? No. But Oh, we are preparing for wedding. Then you have not given. Then the marriage has not finished. The process has remaining one. The process to get her as a wife remains. What is that one? Wedding. While you are waiting for that, the marriage didn't continue again. Hey, the man has gone to another person. Well, 
you have not been one flesh yet. And if you meet together during that time, you're committing immorality. Because she has not yet been released. You hear? She has not yet been released to you. You become one flesh on leaving and cleaving. Is that settled? Thank you. My, my questions go like this. It's about our, our lifestyles in our neighborhood or in where we are living. I find out that uh, many of us today, we claim to be believers and we claim to be holy. But the way we uh, do with ourselves, we are living, is looking a little uh, uh, irritate. Now, a brother or a sister in the compound will leave her body open, walking in the midst of the compound she's going to bath, tie wrapper on her chest, only on her chest. And the body is open, she's going to bath in the public bedroom. I would like you to throw light in that area. Whether it's proper, as a believer, as a child of God, that want to make heaven, and that the Black Bible told us that we should be example of the believers. Whether is that one a good example? Another one also, brother also, that in the, in the compound, the same way, you will see that brother will open his body, and will be walking among the yard, and people will be seeing his body. And this brother will say that he, or he is going to heaven. And he is a minister. And so I want also, I want you also to throw light in this area also. And you see, many of our brothers today, now they wear short nicker at home. And they wear that short nicker, the lives will be showing, the hair and the life will be showing. And they will work in the compound in the name of taking breeze. In the name of maybe taking air. And they wear this uh, singlet that the armpit will be open and the area will be open. They will be working in the compounds. And you know, th there was somebody I was uh, advising some time ago and this person was arguing with me that it doesn't mean anything that he is, he, he is in the house. That even if people see him, it doesn't mean anything. I say it means it mean because this is not right as a child of God. But see that many of us here we do the same thing we are we are living. And sir, I would like you to throw more light in all this area I pointed, sir. Thank you, sir. Well, thank you. There's no more light more than what you are saying. Because you are saying they should not do so again. Why they were doing so was because they had become accustomed to them, to those things. They had lived in that way from the beginning. And they had been used to it. They never bothered about, about their life. They never bothered about those things. Uh, but it's required that when you have become a Christian, you should bother about these things. What you used to do, how you used to dress, you should not dress like that. The way you carry about the nakedness, short naked, it will be, it will be madness that you will find a, and myself, for example, wearing short naked and going to this field, something wrong happened. And it shall not happen. <laughs> It shall not happen. Because my body becomes very sensitive. I value it. I'm afraid 
Because the Bible says my nakedness should not be exposed. You become careful. But when they are in the madness of sin, like the Maniah of Gadara, did they bother about how they dress themselves? How the hair looks like? That's not the business. They are mad. So in the deadness of sinners in their sin, they don't bother. They can wear short maker and go to the airport. And feel very happy even that he is wearing short maker. All this uh, uh, exposure the ladies are doing to their body, they are proud about it. Proud. They sit with their tie open, purposely even. If that can help to stir up some customers. That's what they do. But when the maniac of Gadara was delivered, those demons left. Is then he came to himself and they changed his clothes, cut his hair, he sat under Jesus in his proper mind. If you have become born again, child of God, behave as one that has come to himself in a proper mind. All these things our brother has mentioned, you will not do them. You will be careful with your body as a woman. You will be careful as a man. You will be careful because this nakedness is what lure many people to sin. And you are not aware that you are the object of sin. God will require it of you. It's because of your carelessness. Amen. Yeah. Praise the Lord. Um, please. It's still my impression goes on that um uh burial tradition. One, some people or according to the Bible made it known that we shall leave the dead to bury the dead. And um, some people goes on this line saying that if somebody's parents died as an unbeliever, I mean your parents are unbel un unbelievers, you know, all these um, uh, cults, village cults that they are, they are in, they will, they will ask you to, to bring money for it. As a person, as a believer, you say no. For example, in my own village. If you refuse to do it, they will go and hold your brother to do it on your head. And if there is nobody to do it, according to their, their new law, they will say that this person will not be buried here. That's number one question. So this girl have asked question on that line. Then I would like you to throw more light on that. Then number two, when our member, our member parents die, and that um, his, his or her member, I mean, his or her parents, they are unbelievers, and they can do all those things. Are we right to be there and follow them or participate in? According to the tradition, because in the church also, the church do that, but I'm talking about the holiness and righteousness people here. So I want you to, to be fully directed. Traditions so that, that don't go against the word of God. You do them, it honors God. It's an act of love to the society, to the family. It does not go against the love of God, the word of God. But traditions that will make you disobey the word of God, don't do it. That's what we are saying. Listen, is we taking life too serious? Somebody died in America. We must bring him to Nigeria and bring him to uh, where? To Aba? And, and to Ungwa? No. I'm from Abreba. Is that the demand of scripture? Does it affect his eternal life? Have you considered the money you are wasting that is required for this gospel work? Have you considered that? Do you have any reason why he must come? We don't say it's not if you must not bring him. No. If there's opportunity to do that, but I don't think it's in all it's in all respects. There are times that you may not need to do that. Bury him where he died. And let the money serve the Lord. Are you hearing me? Yes. Must you be there where a burial is taking place? I must come from America for somebody who has died. 
Have you considered the cost? What if you gather the money and send there? Will you not help? Will you not help? We have. When Lazarus died, being a friend of Jesus, did they keep him waiting for Jesus? Huh? Why are we doing all these things? Giving strength to where strength is not required. May the Lord use you to do a new thing. So that other Christians can follow. Otherwise, things that have no meaning are taking over your life. When Jesus died, when did they bury him? After, after how many days did they bury him? No, eh? it was the same day. It was the same day. Why must you keep somebody for 10 years? For 5 years? For 3 years? Until we gather all his family members. Don't see you're doing for yourself. This message is for your salvation. You have wasted enough your resources. God needs them now because there's no more time. That's why he's telling you these things. Woe unto you Pharisees, scribes and Sadducees. You pay tithes of mint and anise and have forgotten the weightier matters of the law. You waste resources on small, small things and the real things you cannot contribute. You cannot spend your money on this. It's on burial. Even when the man is sick, Instead of helping to cure him, giving all your money, you are preparing money for burial. What, which type of spirit is that? You yourself don't understand the matter. If the money you were spending on burial were used to help the man when he was sick, would he have died? No way. It's so you like dead people, serious. <laughs> <laughs> Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So please, let's change these things. Don't allow tradition to bind you. Follow the light of scripture. Let the first man take off and take the first step. Others will follow. Don't mind what you suffer. If you die, you die in your righteousness. Thank you. I have uh, asked this question several times. All they tell me is pray. Keep praying. And um, I hear now that the time is short. For us to live in rapture. As you see us here. All those who are here. Some husbands are here. Wife won't come. Wives are here. Husband is not there. Both are here. Children are not coming. They know it's what I'm talking about. Many of the grown up boys particularly. And refuse to come. And when I ask the question. They say just keep praying. We have only a few seconds, not even minutes. You can, they said also, unless the one you are trying to help is ready. How can someone who even tells you, I don't want to see you with your, uh, talking about God, and you love him, you love them very much. So, what, are you going to talk to God to help or to, to, to do something? Bring the names of these people. That was why I was scratching the ground, I called Professor, my husband, my children one by one. I'm finished. The time is short. They don't want to see you at all. You don't want to, I mean, to, to talk about, because of you talking about God. What are we going to do? Are you going to help us? Now we're going to rise up and pray and bring the names of our relations, of our husbands, wives, children to the Lord and ask that the Lord will serve them. Let's go before the Lord. Let the Lord deliver them from the hands of the enemies. Let the Lord break their yokes. Let them be born again. Let them be born again. Let them be born again. Pray for your wife. Pray for your husband. Pray for your parents. Pray for your children. Pray for your neighbor. Pray for your relations. Pray for your brothers and sisters. Pray for your managers, co-workers, those working with you, your servants.
Jesus name we pray. Raise up your hands I pray for you. Almighty Father every person here is crying for himself for herself for her parents for their relations for their children and all hear the prayer of your children show those family members mercy be they husbands or, or wives oh lord visit them change them Convert them. Draw them from witchcraft and occultism. In Jesus name we pray. I pray for old parents. That they will understand this message. As they get nearer their date. That they will die with this message. Father put the message in their hearts. In Jesus name. You say you are coming. No more in hours. No more in minutes. No more in, I mean, no more in minutes, but in seconds now. And yet, even there are individuals here that are struggling with themselves. They are struggling with Satan. They are struggling with sin. Oh God. And yet they want to go to heaven. They want you to help them. Oh Lord, help them, get them out of sin in Jesus' name. Amen. There are people in poverty. They do what they do because they don't have. And they don't know what to do again. Father, lead them out of poverty. Amen. Open the right door for them. Amen. Let them do righteousness. Feed them even as you feed the bits of the air. In Jesus' name. I pray, pour down the spirit of revival. Pour down the spirit of prayer. Pour down the spirit of fellowship with God. Upon these ones. Pour down the spirit of evangelism. Upon their life. Everybody receive. From the Father, receive. From Jesus, receive. From the Holy Ghost, receive the power of revival. Receive the spirit of revival. Jesus name we pray. Amen. The message you have just listened to is a production of Holiness Revival Movement Worldwide. Holiness Revival Movement Worldwide is a non-denominational ministry that is given to the propagation of Christ's righteousness and holiness in churches and nations of the world through crusades, revival meetings, production and spread of holiness literature and materials. For other spiritual materials, messages, or inquiries, contact us on 0816-902-3948 or 0805-683-4323. You can also reach us through our email address, Holiness Revival Movement at gmail.com God bless you For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life For God sent not his son into the world to condemn the world but that the world through him might be saved Hallelujah. Jesus, I believe in you. You are my Lord and Savior. I believe in you. You are the living Savior.
You are the living Savior. I believe in you. I love you, Lord. I love you. I believe. Savior. Jesus, I will.